Daisy Coleman recently died by suicide. She was a fierce advocate for survivors of rape and sexual assault. Her death has prompted a nationwide conversation about the challenges that some survivors face even years later. Here's investigative reporter Angie Racono. We want to warn you this next report may be tough to hear. It's Daisy's story and it is heartbreaking. But her family points out she never flinched from the truth. And it's important to look at her life and death by suicide in context. Daisy Coleman was just 14 years old when her world shattered. She was a freshman who accused a senior of rape after a night of heavy drinking. Matthew Barnett argued the sex was consensual. And the local prosecutor dropped the charges. We're here today to stand up for someone. From there, Daisy's case exploded in the nationwide spotlight. There were protests. She was bullied. Her family was threatened. They eventually fled Maryville. Barnett eventually pled guilty to child endangerment charges, not for assault, but for leaving Daisy outside in the snow when it was 22 degrees. From there, years rolled by. Daisy finished high school, went to college, and became a tattoo artist. She also told her own story in a Netflix documentary. Good morning, Maryville. It's a cold start to the day right now, only 21 degrees. Audrey was one of my only true friends. Audrey and Daisy told the story of two young accusers who became horribly bullied. Audrey died by suicide. Daisy survived. I want people to sit down and watch Audrey and Daisy and imagine if Audrey or I were one of their sisters or mothers and think about what kind of place they would be in. Daisy started an organization called Safe Bay to raise awareness and change the culture surrounding sexual violence in middle and high schools. Safe Bay acknowledged Daisy's death. As advocates, we know survivors of sexual assault are 10 times more likely to attempt suicide than those who haven't experienced sexual assault. And that is why we will keep dedicating ourselves to this work and her legacy. There's no question that she would want that. Daisy's brother, Charlie, is the co-founder of that organization. Her number one thing was making everybody else's life better, and she did it at her own expense. She paid the greatest, the greatest price to teach everybody, and um, I think it's something that ate at her a long time. Daisy's own obituary talked about what she wanted others to know about the enduring effects of sexual assault. Survivors often battle drug addiction, deal with PTSD, face harassment, and survivors of sexual assault are more likely to commit suicide. Recovery for a survivor is never going to be easy. It's, there's no there's no map to it. There, there's going to be dark days, no matter what. Daisy's mother recently posted the boys' names from that night on Facebook and said, they killed my daughter by what they did to her. Audrey and Daisy would both be alive today if those boys were held accountable. Shame on Sheriff White. If you're wondering whatever happened to those Maryville High School seniors, we wondered too. We found smiling, happy pictures on Facebook and job announcements. Most of the men still live in Maryville. Matt Barnett now lives in Kansas City. We reached out to him and stopped by his house. I'm trying to get in touch with Matt Barnett. Yes, he lives here. He's at work right now. Is he? Can yes. you give him this? He never offered a comment on Daisy's death. But people across the nation are discussing sexual assault and death by suicide because they've witnessed that terrible combination. On Easter Sunday 2012, she slipped away and she took her life and um, it's devastating. Christine McComas lives in Baltimore. She's talking about her daughter, Grace, a freshman who also accused a high school senior of rape, then faced backlash. Her mother called it a modern day stoning. It's just you know, just like pings and arrows coming at this kid. And so all of the people who took part in that bear some guilt for that, I believe. I have not fully accepted that you're gone. Daisy's funeral was tough. No names were ever mentioned. But Daisy's struggles stemming from that night were acknowledged. And how it changed her, strengthened her, wounded her. Her brother remembered Daisy as a survivor and a warrior. Through those tough times, like they say, pressure creates diamonds. Daisy was a diamond. She wouldn't want us to be torn up about this. She would want us to learn.
Daisy was in the process of filming a new documentary called Saving Daisy. It followed her struggles and some of the new therapies she was trying. If you'd like more information about that or her foundation, please head to our website. Angie Ricono, KCTV5 News. If you or someone you know is at risk, there is always help available. The Suicide Prevention Lifeline is up and running 24 hours a day. Call 1-800-273-TALK.